If you're new to Amazon FBA, watch out. What I'm about to talk about in this video can make or break you. What's up guys, welcome back. In this video, I wanna talk about something which 99% of Amazon FBA beginners don't know about, but they're all going to encounter it at some stage. And it's how you react to this particular situation, this particular problem. It's how you react to this that really, really does make or break your Amazon FBA business will make or break your Amazon FBA journey and your ability to actually use this business model to change your life. By the way, if you're new to the channel, welcome and make sure to go and click that subscribe button straight away and also click the notification bell so you get videos like this as they come out. And without further ado, let's dive into the video. So today we're talking about inner game. And this is the mental battle that you will have to face, the, the battles you will have to face with yourself as you go through this. I wish I could guarantee that this wouldn't happen, that you wouldn't have to face these, these low points, the, the sucky periods of doing this. Um, but in fact, I can actually only guarantee that you will have to go through this at some point in time, whether it happens to you within your first month of looking into this, whether it happens to you within the first six months when you launch your first product, pardon me, or if it happens you know, after a year or so, if you maybe have some really great successes early on, it doesn't matter when, at some point it's gonna happen. And it's almost worse if you delay this and you don't have it happen to you until you know, you've been selling for a little while, maybe you've got a couple of successes under your belt. If you haven't prepared for what I'm gonna talk about in this video and you haven't become ready for this and, and come basically prepared to defend yourself from this inner game, these, in, these inner battles, it can almost be worse if it happens to you once, once you've had these successes because you start to build up this sense of confidence and that can sometimes get really destroyed or really weakened um, again, if you haven't gone into this, you haven't understood that there is, the mental game is, the, in, the inner game is almost more important than anything else that you'll learn. Okay, so the first concept that I want you to understand is called the sigmoid curve. Basically, it looks like this. And the, the first key thing to note is that it's not a linear path upwards. Unlike working at a job or some sort of stable thing where you're guaranteed this, you know, trajectory into the future that doesn't really go up much, but like it's also a straight line. So it's kind of predictable and reliable and you can plan ahead. Starting a business really doesn't look like that at all. It actually looks like this, this squiggly line. And the first thing that I wanna draw your attention to is the dip. This is hitting the dip, which happens nearly at the start of the journey. Normally, this is how it starts. It's like, you'll find out about Amazon FBA. You'll find out, maybe you watch some of my videos or some other videos or an ad or something like that. And they make it sound so easy and they make it sound so fantastic. and you get as well that this is scalable and you know here's this guy doing it from i mean florida at the moment but wherever around the world and he's just doing his business from a computer and it's passive income it sounds really fantastic you get really excited you get really motivated you maybe go you buy you know healing 10 or jungle scout you put some money down you're like i'm in this you know i've got skin in the game now and you start looking for products that's that first part where you can see the curve actually here it's going down but it starts above zero it starts positive right so that first phase of excitement and you know just feeling really good like you've got this in the bag already that's where the curve starts and then you can see the first thing it does is it actually starts to go down into a dip and what is that that's the first obstacles that you have to encounter and this the general form of this of this curve that could be again it could be when you just start doing product research and hey you start to realize that actually this isn't going to happen overnight this takes months. Sometimes, uh, let's say you have a really great product in mind. You think it's a really great product. You go and try and find it. You try and find su suppliers to talk to, to like actually get samples and nobody's selling what you want. Or those suppliers, you know, maybe they treat you like dirt or they're just dismissive or you can't communicate with them or whatever it is. And suddenly like the obstacles start to pile up. The time starts to pile up. You start spending more and more time than you thought. And what originally seemed as this easy win, this easy kind of button to press, now you start to realize that you know, this is a real thing and it's like, it's not that easy. For some people, that's the dip. And then after that, they get over that, you know, they find the supply where they find another product, whatever it is, they get over that and it starts going on this upwards trajectory. For some people, that's the case. I'd say for more people, the actual inception dip and hitting that part of the curve where it goes from being pretty good and you know, you're pretty happy about this to this really sucks for a period of time, that dip often happens quite far into the journey. For example, this could be you if you've launched your first product, it was a smashing success, you felt like you're on top of the world, you felt like you could just go again in this straight line from where you are, you know, maybe you're doing 15K per month. Um, I've seen people who are doing 20, 30K per month before they hit this dip, but it does come, it does come. If you haven't hit it yet, you will hit it. And when it hits you, the further along this journey you are without hitting it, the harder it hits you because you think, you've, you think you're really good at this. You think you're, you know, you're, you're making money already 
And you just extrapolate that out into the future, but it doesn't happen like that. The sigmoid curve, it shows you what it's gonna look like at some point. And it's really important. You must understand where you are on this curve and you must predict that that dip is going to happen. If you wanna be able to control your inner psychology and your ability, here's the practical part of this. If you wanna control your ability to make the right decisions when that dip comes, when you get faced with this challenge, with this obstacle, whatever it is, and you feel like quitting or you feel like, you know, this sucks and it's too difficult or I can't be bothered, you have to understand that that point in time is going to come and it's gonna bite you at the butt and know about it and prepare for it ahead of time. It feels really nice to let those emotions take over and to feel like, you know, it's not your fault. It's just, oh, this, whatever this challenge was or damn Amazon, for example. It feels really nice to feel that way, to just give into that and be like, ah, you know, it's not my fault, don't worry about it. But the fact is, as soon as you do that, as soon as you let your emotions take over, you're gonna lose out to somebody like me, someone who's got those emotions in check, who has been through that dip a number of times and gone out the other side and realized, wow, if I let my emotions control me, I would have made the wrong decisions back there. I would have made, dragged this problem out or tried to avoid it instead of just getting in there and dealing with it and realizing that it's just one of these dips across that. I mean, you can extend that sigmoid curve out. It goes up and it actually goes up really quickly. But if you zoom into that curve, it's a series of inception dips over and over again. So what does it look like to let your emotions control you versus control your emotions so that you can get through that dip and get back onto that growth trajectory? One thing I see really commonly is internalizing versus externalizing blame. Ultimately, it's on you to internalize blame. And that means you need to see whatever that problem is, whether it's, let's say you, know, you launch a product and it's not doing as well as you wanted it to. It feels really good to externalize the blame, to say, hey, you know, Amazon PPC is eating up all of my profit margins. If it weren't for Amazon PPC, the external thing, if it weren't for that external thing over there, uh, I'd be making money. It's not my fault. I should be making money except for PPC or Amazon's fees are too high. You know, it's Amazon's fault that I'm not making money. You see this quite commonly in Facebook groups. You'll see somebody go, hey, you know, I could have made money, but then Amazon hit me with these long-term storage fees. Like, you only had 12 months plus to understand that these storage fees were coming and you only had 12 months plus to make a logical plan and make decisions that would allow you to avoid that, but you didn't. You externalized the blame or you chose to not take responsibility to understand what fees were involved when you started selling this product. And then eventually reality catches up and <laughs> pushes back on you and goes, hey, nobody, you've got to learn about those fees because we're charging them to you. But again, that's, you can externalize that and just be like, eh, you know, like Amazon charging me too much money or internalize that blame internalize that responsibility is a better way of putting it and make yourself responsible for fixing the problem. Don't get charged the long-term storage fees. You should be able to avoid them. You've got plenty of notice. PPC cost is the same sort of thing. You know that you're gonna to have to pay some amount of PPC and you can estimate how much that is. And ultimately, if your PPC costs are too high and therefore you're not making money, it's because you didn't account for them and or you didn't do the product research correctly and you went into a niche that's too competitive. And you can take it one step further back from that and say, hey, even if you did all of that stuff to the best of your ability, ultimately you chose to take the risk. Nothing in life is certain, nothing on Amazon is certain. I can't, for example, say that with 100% certainty that this product is gonna do exactly as I think it is. But you know what? That's not the, the fault of the niche, that's not the fault of the platform, that's not the fault of my competition. That's my responsibility, I take that risk to understand that I'm going into something that does not have completely 100% defined outcomes. I take that risk every time, but I know that I'm the one taking that, that risk and therefore that responsibility. So externalizing all of that, it feels really good. However, it doesn't get you anywhere. You don't try and change the situation if you externalize the blame. You just go, hey, it's the fault of this. I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. I'm gonna keep following this pathway. And I guess you then expect the same thing to work out differently next time, but it's not going to. The only way that it will is if you internalize blame or internalize responsibility and actually put on the thinking cap for a second and go, hey, you know, maybe I didn't make the right decision. Maybe I didn't account for this. Maybe I need to make better decisions. Maybe I need to think about this more next time. Maybe this isn't for me. Whatever it is, you've got to be able to accept responsibility for that. Think harder and think better basically and make the changes that you need to change. And look, if you're in the dip, you know, nobody can tell you whether you should keep going or whether you should quit at this point, honestly. However, I do know, and this is what I can tell you is that only you will be able to work out a better strategy, you, only you will be able to evaluate what you did wrong to get you into that dip in the first place because ultimately you did something that didn't work out. And if you didn't do anything wrong and you know that to the best of your abilities, then in that case, then you need to make exactly the same decision again. And this is a really important point as well is understanding you're thinking about this like a poker player, you're thinking about this like a, uh, you know, like a forecaster or any decision maker. If you made the right decision according to the criteria you were given, according to the situation that you were put in, 
make that decision again, even if it turned out with the wrong outcome. And hey, if you're in that dip right now, ultimately I can't tell you whether you should continue and, and continue putting into work to, to turn that around or if you should quit, if you should give up in the dip. Most people give up during the dip. Even if they succeeding, again, you launch a successful product, you launch maybe even two successful products, maybe you're making 30K a month, whatever that number is, if you haven't hit the dip yet, understand that it's coming. And when it comes, you're gonna be asking yourself some serious questions, but ultimately, only you can decide if, you, if you're gonna be able to turn around that negative inner game that is going to affect you once you get down into that dip. Only you can decide how you're gonna act when that happens. Only you can decide, are you gonna to react to your emotions? Are you going to externalize the blame and place that blame on the, you know, whatever has happened around you to put you into that uh, circumstance? Or are you gonna think logically? Are you gonna accept responsibility for that situation and then work to actually turn the losing battle, the, the, the going down into the dip, into a winning battle where you're coming out of it and back onto the growth trajectory. And so for me, the dip was understanding that the really high expectations that I had put on myself and on this business to just be a basically a money tree with just money falling down on me, making it rain, so to speak, the dip was me understanding that that was no longer reality or that had never been reality. And I just thought it was, again, I'd just been looking up into the sky like this, I had to bring it all the way back down. And actually for, for quite a few months, this product came back in stock. It just wasn't selling like it had been before I went out of stock. Um, I got pretty worried. I was launching more products even back then. So this is when I first started. I had a pretty good control on that mental game and that inner game. Um, I think a few things that really helped going into it or that helped for me, not being under financial pressure. So I had, I knew I had always gone into this with the expectation that if it all failed, I would walk away down some money. I would be a little bit poorer but I would be richer for having learned from the experience. I'd be richer for having tried. I would be richer to be able to go back to people, you know, if, if I had to go back to my job and my friends and everyone back in Australia, because I'd left Australia at the same time, I could at least hold my head high and said, hey, I tried, you know, I gave it a go. I gave it my best shot. It didn't work out, but I did it. I tried, I gave it a go. Um, and so my expectations had always been, I'm, I'm financially free to do this and to give it a go and to learn. And, and that liberated me to get through this dip because I realized I was like, hey, you know, worst case, if, if it stays down here, fine. But until that happens and until I have to quit, I'm gonna keep going. I didn't get angry, I didn't get desperate. I didn't, um, you know, I didn't start blaming Amazon for this fact that this product wasn't selling as well as it should have been. I had a plan, I was like, I'm doing this for at least a year. I saw how much money I was making. I realized that it was possible, even if my version of reality didn't really happen as I originally thought it would. I knew the potential was there. So I <laughs> turned the emotions down. I didn't blame anything external. I was like, why, you know, why isn't this product selling? I did what I could. I optimized that product. Um, but more importantly, I just kept my eyes on the goal. The goal was do this for a year, launch more products, try and get you know, another product to do the same thing that this other one had done and just keep going. So that's how I controlled me in a game. That's how I got out of the dip because it happened. That, that other product, the, the third product, sorry, the one that was doing really well and then wasn't doing really well, um, that sent me through this dip in this sort of like mini emotional roller coaster. It eventually came back. It, it did eventually come back and it's done really well ever since then. It was just that first dip. I don't know what happened then. It was out of season and I guess a new product, but it, it kept going. And then I found another product that did the same thing as well. And so that was me just like climbing out of that dip, but it took months, it, uh, months of earning a lot less than what I already thought, you know, I could be earning in a flat straight line from there. So that was my dip. Terrible when it happens, but understand that it's gonna happen and how you react to it. You know, a lot of people would have just quit. They'd be like, ah, screw this, you know, it's not worth it. Or this isn't what I expected it to be. The dip is where the weak hands drop out. So don't be a weak hand, don't drop out during the dip. So that's the first point. Understand the dip is there. It's coming for you. If it hasn't already, it will. And the second point is, now I'm no expert at being a monk, but what I do know is that the same concept which applies to meditation and mindfulness, which is not clearing your mind, but separating your mind and becoming less reactive, you, ha you will have to do the same thing with, firstly with your emotions. So it's your emotional reaction to these situations. Like for example, at some point in time, if you go into this, if you get a listing up and running, you get a product up and running, it's selling, it's making you money. At some point in time, that listing is gonna go down. It's gonna be up most of the time. It's gonna be making you dollars per day, hopefully hundreds of dollars, maybe thousands of dollars per day. I don't know. But at some point, it's not gonna be doing that either. Amazon is gonna shut the listing down for some complaint or some warning or something like that, or a hijacker will jump on your, your listing. 
or you might get an infringement or one of the many different things that can happen to that listing, which you don't own, by the way, it's not yours, it's Amazon's listing. Something's going to happen to it at some point in time. And when that happens, your source of money, your source of potentially your source of self-worth, if you've been doing this and you're like, hey, I'm such this, I'm this awesome, you know, e-commerce seller, I'm, I'm killing it, I'm making it rain. At some point, that's all going to get shut off really quickly and it's going to really hurt and you probably find out about it in a really abrupt way. Like maybe you'll just wake up one day and realize that you've got no sales, um, which sucks when, when that's how you find out. But however it is, you, it's going to happen. The way you need to react to that is just like a monk. You need to see it happen. You need to almost be distanced from it, like, like an out-of-body experience. Like it's happening, but you're just not that affected by it. The reason why you need to learn this like monk-like <laughs> resilience when you come into this Amazon game is that you're going to react worse, much, much worse to this situation if you're caught up in your emotions and you most likely will be the first time this happens. But understand now, please, like take this as advice. It's happened to me enough times. I've seen it happen to enough people, particularly in this early stage of like, even if you're making lots of money, if you're less than 12 months into this, the first couple of times that it happens, it's going to hurt. And when it hurts, your blood starts boiling. You think again, the, the externalizing blame, this isn't my fault. It's a hijacker's fault. I mean, in this case, it is a hijacker's fault, but it doesn't matter whose fault it is. You're the one who has to solve the problem. The hijacker is not going to turn around and be like, ah, oh, you know, sorry, man, I, I didn't mean to do this. They're a hijacker. They're doing exactly what they want to be doing. Um, and it's your job to learn how to solve the problem. That's going to be a lot of backwards and forwards conversations with seller support. That's a lot of strategic planning beforehand as well. But understanding that those strategic plans, like, for example, getting brand registry, uh, you know, having a monitoring process in place to actually check your listings or ha even having alerts set up with Helium 10. Those are things that you can do beforehand. But when it comes down to it, it's like not running around like a headless chook trying to work out all those things then. It's just going, okay, like what do I need to do? How can I convey the communication clearly, as clearly as possible? How can I sit calmly in front of my computer even though I know I'm potentially losing hundreds of dollars per day and just go and do the research? If I don't know exactly what the steps are, I need to put the time in to, to work out how to do that. And that's not something you can do when your blood is boiling and you're seeing red and you're also just blaming everyone and angry and frustrated or even in a feeling of desperation because while that makes you urgent, it makes you think much, much worse, right? So you're able to research, you gotta be able to just react coolly and calmly to this. And again, if you're a monk, then you're coming into this with a great advantage. If you're not a monk, which you're probably not, I recommend that you do try, like learn this in advance, start doing some meditation. Start doing some mindfulness. Start being aware of your emotions and, and being present and in touch with your emotions because you can do that when you get into a situation like this, something like that, like literally just like sitting in a chair or somewhere comfortable, closing your eyes and just feeling what that feels like and then recognizing that you don't have to react to it. It can be super important. This is inner game stuff. I know this seems like I'm going down a rabbit hole here, but this will help you at some point. If you get into this, you start doing this again, at some point in time, this is going to happen. It's the dip. When it hits you, you'll know that this is, this is not a good feeling, but there are ways of dealing with it. So learn how to cool off, cool down, be a monk, be calm, be present, be in the moment. Don't be reactive to these emotions. Don't let them control you. So far, we've covered understanding the dip, how it fits into your journey, whether you are about to encounter it, whether you are in it, or whether you, you know, have encountered it and gotten through it. It's there. It's always there. And then the next thing is learning how to behave like a monk, to distance yourself from, from your reactions, your emotions when you hit the dip, which you inevitably will, because being a monk and controlling your emotions will help you to get out of the dip and come out the other side intact, feeling positive, feeling good, feeling ready to build and continue on that upwards momentum. The third thing then is being too afraid to commit. And this is what I see when somebody come into the dip, particularly after people have come into the dip, whether it's with Amazon or whether it's with some other business venture, some other thing that they've tried and they started doing it and then they hit the dip wherever it was and they didn't know how to become a monk. They didn't know how to control their inner game, control their emotions, to internalize control, to take responsibility and to problem solve their way out of it. They didn't know how to do that. And so when they hit the dip, they just fell through the cracks. And this becomes a increasingly terribly negative self-reinforcing habit loop where if you've hit a dip before and you've just fallen through the cracks, you never saw what it was like to come out the other side. I know I'm sitting here telling you this because I know because I've hit so many of those dips and I, every time I've just realized it's a bump in the road as I've come out the other side, I've seen there's so much more to gain. I know that that track record of experience that I have has built up so much more confidence within me. 
and I can convey that to you in this video and you can probably understand the words that I'm saying. But if you are watching this and you've been through the dip and you've fallen through, maybe doing a couple of different things, maybe it's with Amazon, your first product failed and you just gave up. You still knew that there, you know, enough people are telling you that there's light at the end of the tunnel. So you academically, again, the, the logical part of your brain knows that there is more to gain from there. But the emotional part of your brain, the animal part of your brain, which by the way is much more powerful than the, the higher thinking, the, the logical part, the animal part of your brain, it just remembers how freaking scared it was when you went through and you fell down into the dip and it just sucked and you felt like you were a failure and you were desperate maybe and all those really negative emotions, but you didn't get out the other side. So you weren't able to build the positive habit loop, the positive reinforcement loop, you built a negative loop. And so failure to commit is what happens when you've built that negative loop, when you don't have the track record of positive experience telling you, again, the emotional part of your brain, telling you that, hey, this is gonna be okay. You're gonna get through this. When you don't have that built up, it's really hard to actually commit to this again. What can I say to that? Honestly, it's hard. It's hard to work with people who have been through that. Really, uh, it's, it's difficult. If not with Amazon, let's say you fail the product with Amazon, you at least wanna have a track record of experience of getting, getting through the dip in something in your life because then you can translate that experience onto Amazon and be like, oh, this is just another one of those. When you can do that, it's okay. But I've seen enough people that they start to use, for example, the, the way that this comes out is analysis paralysis. It comes out as trying to rely on the numbers, trying to get something, this perfect magic recipe out of just looking at numbers on Amazon. It's not gonna happen like that. What you actually need to understand is that this is never gonna be 100%. First of all, there's always a dip coming. If you haven't hit it, you know, this time you will hit it soon. There's always a dip coming. It's never gonna be perfect. You're never gonna feel like there's no dip coming. You're always gonna feel a little bit un unconfident and you should, you should never feel 100% confident. And that fear that you've been building when you've gone through these dips and fallen through the cracks again, to some extent that fear is normal and you need to just embrace ownership of the fact that that fear is okay and you will have to take risk and you will have to face that fear and that feeling which sucks and when you're going down into this dip again, it's gonna suck. But you're still gonna have to take that risk and ultimately whether you succeed or whether you fail and how you choose to come out of that dip, whether it's upwards or it's again just down again, ultimately that's gonna be completely on you, not on anyone else. You can't blame it on Amazon. You can't blame it on, you know, life circumstances. You can't blame it on, you know, a lack of resources. You can't blame it on your competition. You can't blame it on anything except for yourself. And that sounds harsh, but I know, and I think anybody else who's been through those dips and come out the other side and understood that it's just, just another bump in the road, I think anyone else will agree with me when, when I say that that is an amazingly beautiful thing. It's a very human thing and it's very empowering to be in control of that of fear, to, to do things despite the fear, to take risks, to strive to succeed and actually do and actually strive, like actually take actions to make what you wanna happen, happen, instead of being too scared to, to fall down the dip again. I get that because I've been through the dip enough times. And, and for example, like I've been through it mostly on Amazon, right? Mostly doing business stuff. But I know that I can take that same feeling and I can go and apply it to something else. I'm an incredibly introverted person. None of this comes naturally to me. One of my biggest fears is actually going and, and talking to strangers in public. I am actually getting sweaty palms thinking about it. But at the same time, I know that it only takes, it only will take a few times of doing that and failing and probably feeling like crap and, and having these sweaty palm feeling. I know that it only takes, or maybe let's say not a few times, let's say a few weeks of doing that, of concerted effort of just like putting yourself into the fear into the fear, into the fear every day. I know that that goes away. I've done it with enough things. I've been through the dip enough times uh, to, to know that it's okay. That's part of what it means to grow and to be a better human being. And whether that's business, whether that's talking to strangers, which is I think is my biggest sort of next fear. Um, it, was, it was talking on camera and doing this sort of thing, but that went away literally after a few weeks. So I get it. Uh, being too afraid to commit can be a very hard thing when it comes to putting money down, when it comes to facing that fear of failure again. I guess my practical advice here, if you know, you've, you've watched this far and, and you understand what I'm talking about, but you're still lacking the, the practical steps. I, if, if this is you and you've failed a few times, understand that it's harder for you mentally, just purely on a mental level, a mental, emotional, you know, that the lower brain part rather than the logical, rational level. It's gonna be harder for you to get back and do the exact same thing again if you've had a history of failure. So if you're afraid to commit because of that, I would suggest just taking some pressure off. Maybe that means you don't actually need to do this right now. 
Maybe that means you don't need to feel so bad about it if you are dragging your feet or something. Maybe you just accept it for a little while. Go away. I'm thinking the imagery of like taking a walk around the block, but maybe, you know, on a longer time frame. Take a week off Amazon, stop watching any YouTube videos and just breathe in. <laughs> breathe in, breathe out a few times and just relieve yourself of any pressure to succeed or to fail. That's maybe some advice I'd give. And I guess what I'd say to end this is, if that's you, if you're too afraid to commit, just come back, take all of that pressure off, come back when you're ready to fail. When you come back and you're ready to fail, that's probably when you'll succeed. So I wanna leave it there. This was a video on the inner game, the mental battle that you will have to fight with yourself at some stage. If you haven't already done so, you will, and it will happen again and again and again and again. And you'll realize that that is the thing that makes or breaks people who are Amazon sellers, entrepreneurs, business owners, any, anything that's worth doing in life, it's gonna be a series of mental battles, not against the outside world, not against the external things that are happening out there. It's all gonna happen in here internally. So I hope that this has given you some insight and some food for thought as to how you can control your inner game when this does happen to you again, which it will. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give the video a thumbs up to show that you did enjoy it, which by the way, if you're watching this, you probably did, so give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And I guess the last thing is that I know how important this stuff is because I have been through it enough times. I've sold enough millions of dollars on Amazon to know. And I've also taught enough people who are going through this to see these problems repeating themselves. So if you wanna shortcut a lot of this process, not all of it obviously, but a lot of it, and you wanna get a head start to start your own Amazon FBA business, what I recommend you do is go down below, go click on the first link in the description. That's gonna take you through a process where you can actually apply to join the training program that I put on called the FBA Freedom Accelerator. So from there, we can potentially jump, hop on a phone call, see if it's a good fit and see if we wanna work together. So I would recommend you do that if you want the training. Otherwise, stay tuned for the next video that's coming up right here and I'll see you there.